In programming, there are two choices for you when it comes to manual memory management. There's the old way of doing things with global allocators, aka malloc, and there's the new way, passing around explicit allocators. But what if there was a third way? Or at the, at the very least, what are the advantages and disadvantages of these two methods? Let's go through it. I'm Sam. I am writing, well, at this point, have written an operating system, but I'm still writing that operating system, a programming language. Uh, I'm on the quest to recreate all of computers, but actually good. So I have a fair bit of experience, and uh, I want to share that with you today and some insight I had recently while talking to a friend of mine. So let's define our terms first. By a global allocator, I of course mean something that is basically similar to a classical C malloc. Okay, I have this global thing, I can call a function, get some memory, I then do some stuff with the memory, and then I free it later by giving back the original pointer or whatever. You can have different schemes for this. The great advantage here is that I can always use this, no matter where I am in my code. If I need some memory, oh, I'll just malloc it, and then uh, you know, I'll remember to free it later. It gets freed some other place. The real productivity hack is realizing, ah, oh, actually, you know, just don't free it. You can be tremendously productive if you just call malloc for things, because it allows you to be very speedy. But then we get into this whole memory leaks game. That would be the disadvantage of this style. Is that you both need to remember to, well, need a need. You kind of do need to remember to free most of your memory. Especially if you're writing some kind of library. And, um, well, it could be a pain to keep up with this. So, uh, and we also can't, if I write some code in this fast, dirty manner where I just call malloc whenever I need some memory, then I can't override that. Some other code uh, that uses this code I wrote later cannot change the allocation behavior. Um, and that's what some of these modern techniques aim to solve. So the modern techniques, oh, and then there's also this uh, aspect where, you know, real the real modern technique is we want to use arena allocators. But a global allocator of this style, in the classic style, could never be an arena allocator because it has so many different users and they have completely overlapping lifetimes. You can make no assumptions, and so it definitely cannot be an arena. Enter the explicit allocator. Here I have my function. It takes an allocator A. It allocates... Uh, you know, this integer, it assigns to it, and then it returns a pointer to that integer. Um, and then, of course, the usage code we can see down here is we call my function, pass in the allocator we're using, and then when we free, we also specify that allocator. Okay, cool. Now we can, we get performance gains from this because um, we can break up our allocators. We could do interesting things, but the most interesting thing we can do is we can change it to be an arena. Okay, so we pass in an arena, and an arena is just a type of, you can think of it as a type of allocator that where you allocate a bunch of times and then you free once. You free basically everything you allocated in a certain period. Um, and now our usage improves from this because we now get rid of this free call. We can, you know, use the arena, use the arena, and then we reset it at some later point. Now, you know, some people will say that, like, the reason you want an arena is because of speed, and that's certainly true, but the real reason, I think, is for productivity, is that it actually tremendously simplifies the amount of effort you spend allocating memory. Because before, like I said, like, on the uh, global allocators, you call, you can just call malloc from everywhere, and you don't, you, it, you can be tremendously productive when you don't have to remember to free. Well, the advantage here is we actually don't have to remember to free. Your functions can just emit memory like it's spray, like it's sawdust, 
right? It just, you know, you just alloc, alloc, alloc. It does not matter because we don't need to remember to free it. That's the advantage here, is we can just, uh, you know, we can just be absolutely careless with our allocations and then, because it'll get freed later at some point by the caller. Okay, this is great, but this has problems, this explicit approach. This applies both the arenas, but also the explicit allocators, which is, um, here we have procedure A, procedure B, procedure C, okay? And there seem to be no issues here, except that B can only call itself, whilst A and C can call all the procedures, this example. What we've introduced by having these explicit uh, allocators or explicit arenas is we've introduced a uh, function coloring, right? People will recognize and hopefully shudder in horror at, uh, you know, the various languages adding async stuff. This was popular for a while. I remember it was async C, C sharp, async Rust, async Java, I think. There was a period where doing asynchronous programming was cool, so all these languages added asynchronous programming. But then asynchronous code could, could only call asynchronous code. You couldn't call into asynchronous code from synchronous code. So you get this coloring problem. Um, this becomes a terrible drag on productivity. You waste so much time because it seems it seems fine for the moment until you need to because you're always changing the code. That's the secret is you're changing the code. You realize proc B needs to call proc C, but it's red. And so it can't call into blue. We get this. This is the fundamental coloring problem, right? Blue can call red, but red cannot call blue. And for our allocators, this isn't for async. It's just two colors for our explicit allocators. This actually is grows with the amount of allocators is we have, you know, zero, one, two, three, red, blue, green, orange procedures. And, you know, orange can call all these things. Green can call green, blue, red, red can only call red. But we can solve this problem if we recognize that most of the time is spent writing red and blue procedures. Green definitely occurs, orange occurs as well. Those tend to be more in a certain subsystem or you you have some system that you're designing um, where you need to care more about stuff. But a lot of the code we just wanna just write this, reuse it later, whatever, is red and blue. And um, certainly red is what we write by default, right? So what we can do is if we just turn the red into blue, we force color it blue, we stop having these function coloring problems. So to make this practical, in this original example, we would just force ourselves to always put an arena argument, even if the procedure doesn't allocate. Well, it doesn't allocate currently, but it may allocate sometime in the future after a refactor. Well, now we're just typing a bunch, right? So, okay, we got rid of the coloring, we've gained in productivity. Um, procedure B is now exactly like procedure A, procedure C. We don't have this coloring problem. This is what I see with many friends of mine who use the explicit allocator approach is that they just do this. They get into the habit of always typing out the uh, arena parameters and then they pass it throughout their entire code base. Always passing around this arena parameter. Well, what we can do is, we, you know, if we have the programming language on our side, we can just say, oh, if every procedure by rule is going to have this arena parameter, we just get rid of that. We introduce a context struct. So a context is basically, you can think of it like thread local storage, but it's implemented in the language. Um, so you always have access to this context. Then we get rid of the arena uh, parameter because we always have access, access to the context. And then we just use the arena that's on the context in all these cases. 
Now what happens here is um, we can now say context arena is arena one. We call procedures A, B, C, and then we reset a, arena one, right? And all the things that happened in between here, all the allocations get, get freed. And procedure A, B, and C all used arena one. It gets a little bit hairy, this, if we want to procedure B to use a different allocator or a different arena in this case. But that is also trivially solved. Well, trivially and trivially, but trivially, if I can speak today. Um, what we have to do is we have to assign the context and then call the procedure, then unassign it afterwards back to the previous value. Which here is fine. If you have to also save out the, say you didn't set context.arena earlier in the procedure, then it gets even worse because you have to actually save what this was before. Create an additional variable. That gets very hairy. So what we do is we introduce some sugar to do exactly this thing. We introduce a temporary assignment. Okay. So when we hit proc B, context.arena will be saved out the value, we assign arena two, then the procedure is called, after it returns, we reassign the old value of context.arena, which in this case is arena one, but it could actually have been arena two the entire time. That's, um, could be the case. So it could be something different. Point is, with this extra sugar, we simplify using this system and and um, we, we make it tractable to write code in this style where everything is forced to be a blue function. Okay, why is this good? Well, the original virtue I mentioned of malloc was that you can use it anywhere and you don't have to, well, you can use it anywhere, but you have to remember to free. What the explicit arena has bought you is you have to be passing this parameter around the whole time. But allocating is easier. And now you just can allocate whenever you want, whatever. Just emit junk and clean it up later. Now we've fused both of them where we say we always have access to an arena that we can just throw junk onto and uh, return it to the caller. We can throw junk onto it and then not use it. It's, you know, it's whatever. We can leak like crazy and then the arena just gets reset later. Um, and what we've done is we've removed, so we have the advantage of the explicit arenas, but we removed the coloring problem that they introduce between red and blue functions. You still have this, well, there still are some problems here. Um, like, for example, what do we do if we want to do allocations that we then free within the scope of one function? Because you can't just use the one arena in this case. Here you would have to pass in another arena to be this like temporary use um, arena. And then you reintroduce the coloring problem because now you've turned this into a green function. Um, which certainly like this would work for some amount of time, but I actually have a separate solution for this. Um, and this is also how, you know, if you want overlapping lifetime with the arenas inside a function, you need more arenas. Um, and you, you could imagine this gets complicated really quick. You need to coordinate this. Uh, and you all, you also risk reintroducing this coloring problem. Well, I have solutions for this in my language brevis. But that shall be discussed in a different video because the way it works, I've tried to explain it many times and uh, seemingly it's often misunderstood. It, I've, I still don't know exactly how to explain it in a clean and concise and quick way for a YouTube video form. So um, other, another video in the future will explain that. But you could, you could, you, you'd already do pretty well to have adopted this style. Now you've gone from this general, you have the advantage of the advantages of the explicit allocators. You can allocate whenever and wherever, like with malloc. You just have, you haven't completely solved this co coloring problem yet, but you have done, you have gone most of the way there. Uh, although to be fair, this is the easy bit, right? Because 
solving this completely. So this is maybe a 60% solution. The full 98% solution uh, is the really hard bit, which is why that we'll have to wait for another video. If you found this useful, if you want to read about uh, or watch uh, things about my main project that I do, you know, I, uh, as I said in the beginning, I work on Serenum. It's my attempt at reinventing uh, computing to make it look uh, or make it behave and be less bad. Um, you can read more about it at samhsmith.com slash Serenum. You can also buy a Serenum today at tabona.shop. Uh, and with that, I wish you a very good continued day.